What's up guys, it's Nick with the Hungry Handgunner. So today, uh, just full disclosure, I'm not shooting, I'm just talking. So, I get a lot of questions about the best caliber for home defense, best caliber for carry, best pistol caliber, period. Uh, which one has more stopping power? So we're going to just kind of address that. Um, stopping power with, with handguns, it, just stopping power as a... Uh, term is just kind of one of those things that's really hard to define and it's especially with handguns you're not getting that hydrostatic shock that you would with the faster velocities of rifles so basically what I tell people all the time is if you're only gonna have one handgun and that's gonna be your go-to get a nine millimeter you can get a lot of practice ammo you can uh, find ammo very easily it's pretty readily available most of the time obviously there was that ammo shortage um, a few years ago but for the most part, uh, places that carry ammo likely are going to stock 9mm. It's not a very punishing round. And, you know, the terminal ballistics of your, your popular self-defense loadings, um, they're, they're sufficient. So, you know, all the, I think a lot of people get so hung up on what caliber to carry. Um, they're, they're forgetting way more important things like getting out and practicing, um, keeping your weapon well-maintained realistic training scenarios, proper gear, everything else, uh, and even knowing some laws and then obviously going beyond just the firearms thing, getting some first aid, first responder type training, keeping some of those supplies on you. Uh, those are all things that I consider uh, orders of magnitude more important than what caliber you're carrying. Uh, I like shooting as much as the next guy. I like guns, I like ammo, I like all that stuff. But I think we often get hung up too much on the latest ballistic advantage um, or marketed ballistic advantage and we really don't spend enough time thinking about the stuff that really matters and I'm sure I'll catch some flack uh, that's just my take on it it's no secret I carry a nine millimeter I also have 45s 44s 357 50 AE 57 so I enjoy shooting a variety of things uh, but I carry a nine millimeter for the reasons I've outlined you know you can get a thousand rounds of nine for 200 bucks or less you know anywhere between like 175, 250, depending on what you're looking for. So that's not bad on pricing. Um, as I said, the round is not punishing at all. It's very, it doesn't have much recoil, even out of something like uh, this MMP Shield 2.0. It's a very small gun, but even with, you know, you got seven plus one or eight plus one on board, it's not bad to shoot nine out of here. Now, obviously with the shorter barrel, shorter sights, you're gonna have to practice more. Um, I have a review up on this one. I'm actually going to do a more in-depth review coming up soon on that. But anyways, yeah, so I, I would actually posit the opinion that your caliber selection isn't nearly as important as how much time you put in shooting that caliber, practicing, um, even doing your dry fire fundamentals. That stuff is all way more important than whether you're a 9 or 45 or 357 or 38. All that stuff really doesn't matter nearly as much as how well you are at putting that round where it needs to go. So, like I said, I'm sure I'll catch some flack. That's fine. Just my opinion. Anyway, guys, we're going to do some more videos tomorrow. Stay safe. Keep shooting. Talk to you next time.